In this video, I'm talking about ultralight backpacking knives, how to choose one, and what I carry out on the trail. What's up guys, Pi here from pieonthetrail.com. On my YouTube channel, my website, I talk about ultralight backpacking, through hiking, and all things gear related. So if you're new here, consider subscribing, and you can check out my website in the description below. So today's video is all about ultralight backpacking knives. I enjoy knives, I own a lot of different knives, and I use them on a really regular basis. But for an ultralight backpacking trip, I really need a knife that fits a certain set of requirements. So before we even look at the actual requirements I have for an ultralight backpacking knife, we've got to look at what I actually use a knife for out on the trail, or actually what I don't use a knife for on the trail. If I'm on an ultralight backpacking trip, I'm generally not making fires. So I don't need a big, heavy knife to help me prepare fires and kind of chop wood or anything like that. That's not a knife. That's a knife. I also don't need my knife for a survival situation. As far as I'm concerned, when I'm on a backpacking trip, there should really be no sort of survival situations. If I've done my research and I've done all my preparation and I have all the gear with me necessary, then there really shouldn't be that sort of situation arising. Of course, things do happen, but with the knowledge, the skills I have, and a few of the things that I do carry inside my backpack, I should have all of my bases covered and never really find myself in an emergency situation. I also don't use my knife for preparing food. Generally speaking, all the foods that I carry in the backcountry don't need much preparation. I do sometimes carry some salami or some cheese, and I find that the back of my titanium spoon can cut cheese perfectly well, and I have no need to carry a knife for food preparation. I know a lot of people carry a pocket knife to open packaging, but if I can't open it with my hands or even with my teeth, then that packaging is probably pretty bomb proof and I'm in trouble anyway. Other people carry a small pocket knife to trim their nails out on the trail. I carry a dedicated pair of nail clippers, so I don't need a knife that can do that out on the trail. So now all of those points are out of the way, let's look at all the things I do use a knife for. Mmm, there really aren't that many. There aren't many tasks out on the trail that I actually need a knife for. Sometimes if I'm carrying a small knife with me, yes, maybe I'll open some packaging. Yes, maybe it makes food preparation a little bit easier. But generally speaking, I'm very rarely taking my knife outside of my backpack. Sometimes if I need to trim up some Luco tape for blister prevention or to deal with blisters, yes, it's nice to have a small sharp blade to trim up the Luco tape and take care of my feet. Sometimes actually when I'm in town and I've bought town food, maybe I'm staying in a motel or a hostel, it's nice to have a small knife to help prepare that food. For example, sometimes I like to buy a rotisserie chicken and a big thing of salad. So having a small knife, of course, helps kind of prepare that chicken. But really, I kind of just generally go caveman style and rip into it with my hands and my teeth. Because I don't have many uses for a knife out on the trail, the number one consideration for me is that an ultralight backpacking knife should be ultralight. Why would I consider carrying something that's heavy and cumbersome when I could carry something really small that's functional, that disappears inside my backpack, but then serves its purpose when I do need it? We'll be looking at a few different knives soon, but a good benchmark for the weight of a knife should be around 1.5 ounces or below. The second consideration when choosing an ultralight backpacking knife is that it needs to be functional. Why would I carry something, even if it is super light, if it isn't functional and it doesn't serve the purpose I'm carrying it out there for? This also goes hand in hand with the third requirement. It needs to be high quality. If I'm gonna to commit to carrying something out on the trail, it needs to be of high quality because when I go to use it, it needs to work first time, every time. They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time it works every time. That doesn't make sense. I'm not gonna carry something cheap and flimsy that's gonna break the first time I use it. That doesn't necessarily mean you need to spend a lot of money, but shop around and choose something that's high quality so it's there when you need it. The next requirement I have is that the knife needs to be inexpensive. I'm not about to spend a huge amount of money on a small pocket knife that's gonna spend most of its time inside my backpack. Backpacking gear can get really expensive really quickly. I like to choose a high quality, inexpensive knife because if something happens to it out on the trail, for example, I lose it, then it's not that big a deal. Something else you may want to consider is that you may want your knife to cover multiple functions. 
on ultralight backpacking trips I'm always trying to find one piece of gear that covers multiple functions and a knife is no different. Some knives although ultralight and simple can serve multiple roles and we're going to look at a few of those right now. So the first knife I'm talking about today is the Victorinox Classic SD. Victorinox have been making knives since 1884 and the Classic is one of the most popular models. It weighs just 0.75 ounces and serves seven different functions making it a really great lightweight option. One of my favourite functions of the Classic SD are the small scissors. They can come in really handy when trimming up Luco tape to deal with blisters but the biggest drawback of the Classic SD is the small knife blade. It's very sharp and good at detailed cutting work but it's not great for food preparation. The next knife we're looking at is the Oppenel number no. 4. Oppenel was a French knife maker that's also been around for a long time. The number no. 4 is their smallest offering. It weighs just 0.35 ounces making it extremely light. The blade doesn't lock but it's super functional and very very sharp and it disappears inside your pack. The Oppenel just has a single blade so it doesn't have the versatility of for example the Victorinox but the blade is larger and more functional. If you're looking for a really light high quality knife then the Oppenel number no. 4 is a really good option. Next up is the Victorinox Bantam and you can think of it as the bigger brother to the classic SD because it weighs almost double. It has a totally different set of functions doing away with the scissors entirely but it does have a bottle opener which is always great on a through hike. The knife blade is much much larger making it really good for food preparation and it feels really solid and stable inside the hand. It's a super high quality item. If you do use your knife regularly you'd be hard pressed to beat the Bantam because it still only weighs 1.12 ounces. Next up is the Vargo Titanium Carbon Fiber Folding Knife. Vargo have been making high quality titanium products since the early 2000s and this is the only knife on the list that locks into place making it feel super sturdy and reliable. It's virtually identical to the Bantam in weight weighing in at just 1.13 ounces. It obviously doesn't have any of the other functions that some of the Victorinox knives do but the blade is very sharp and very functional and it has a very fine tip for intricate cutting tasks. If you're looking for something that's really simple but reliable and sturdy then the Vargo folding knife might be right for you. So the final option that we're going to be looking at is also the lightest. It's to carry simply a razor blade with you out on the trail. If you don't regularly use a knife out on the trail but still want to have something sharp with you just in case then you can carry an individual razor blade wrapped up in card and tape and this weighs just 0.12 ounces. For a little bit of extra weight you can also carry something like this which is a folding razor blade. It weighs just 0.20 ounces and is surprisingly sturdy. It can definitely be used for food preparation and for opening packages. It disappears inside your pack and if it gets blunt or damaged you can always replace it as they're very very cheap. So those are the knives I generally carry on an ultralight backpacking trip. Once in a while if I'm going on a shorter trip and I know I'm going to be making a lot of fires then I might carry a small fixed blade knife. If you'd like to see me make a video about that then leave a comment below. I'm going to leave links in the description of all of the knives I mentioned in this video. If you do use one of those links to purchase something then you help support this channel and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Alright that's all I've got for you today guys. Leave me a comment below and let me know what knife you carry out on the trail. Thanks for watching as always and I'll catch you in the next one.